my name is Lauren Light, or you can call me Hikari, and this is going to be, I don't even know, it's going to be like a webcam blog sort of video thing that I'm doing um, about, yeah, about anime, like anime, manga, like drama, Asian drama, usually in that Asian cultural thing, you'll see me do a lot of that. I might talk about, you know, things that happen here, but it's mostly going to be about anime, because I am a, I don't want to call myself an otaku, because I'm not that bad, and I'm, I'd like to say, uh, I'm a bit of a weebo, but I'm really, I'm really not that bad either. I'm sort of, ooh, my hair? I'm sort of, like, in between... In between there, like, you'll, you'll just see me sort of doing stuff. Like, I don't collect a lot of things. Um, I, I would like to collect books, but I'm really, I'm, I'm poor. I'm poor, like, really poor. And everybody knows if you're in, like, the anime world, animation and stuff ain't cheap unless you're doing it online. And, yeah, that's kind of what I do. I like to see things online, which makes it really hard because sometimes you just just can't get the full definition, you know, there are those fan books and things that authors do, and I love those, I got a fan book for Naruto once, and I got it actually, the actual book, I'd give it to you if I had it right on me right now, but I don't, so I got that, and it was totally awesome, totally wicked, and I enjoyed it really, really a lot, and I'm so glad I purchased it, like, when I did, like, this was, like, in the beginning of Naruto, when, like, Naruto Shimpuden didn't even come out yet, so that's how, yeah, I started Naruto when I was 12, right, when he was 12, and I was, like, totally obsessed with, um, Kakashi, yeah, I've, I've got this little, um, older, older man kind of complex, but that's not the point, so, what I'm here to talk about today, just to give you like a little insight of what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to go right into my topic. Today I'm going to be talking about Kudosu. I can't say the name because I'm not Japanese. <laughs> Kudosu Ignore my bad English. Black Butler. Book of Circus. That's, that's, you know, us Americans. That's how we know it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. I... I watched it, and I say I did watch it. Um, did I watch the first season? Yes. Did I watch the second season? Yes. Did I read the manga? Partially. And you'll understand why when I tell you and, like, review and try not to spoil as much as I can um, about this this new anime. So I finished it recently. Um, I was thinking about watching it when it first came out, but I was like, uh, no, it's just, um, no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I didn't. Um, but I watched it just recently to kill time, and that, that's that's kind of what it is for me, what I kind of figure it is. It's like a kill time kind of thing. It's them, you know, trying to bring it back, like scratch all the other stuff that's happened. Forget season two, forget the end of season one, and let's, let's get this in me. Because really, this was Noah's Ark. It was based off of an arc in the manga, which is Noah's Ark as well. And the series, the animation, animated version of it was exactly, pretty much exactly like the manga arc of it. So that's why I wasn't really surprised when I saw the animation of it. I had read the manga previously, and I, I already saw all this stuff coming. And I was like, I already see the future. I'm like, psychic. So I already know what's going on. But So basically, um... It's all about, let me let me give you a little overview of what it was about, a little synopsis here. It's all about Shiel and Sebastian are on another whirlwind adventure. They're soaring across the galaxy, fighting crime, and it's like, <laughs> I'm just joking. No, that's not what happens. Okay, so Shiel actually does get a letter. Apparently there are k children kidnappings that are going on. And within these towns that children are kidnapped, children are being kidnapped. Uh, circus troop passes through. So the queen has decided that she'll, as the evil noble, the queen's dog, to go and investigate the circus troop to figure out what's happening with these children. So that's basically, that's the whole blurb of what this animation arc is about. It's all about Shiel and Sebastian solving this mystery. It really has nothing to do with the overall plot, like, um, regarding getting, um, Shiel's revenge, things like that. It really has, it doesn't answer any of those previous questions. What it does do, though, it helps enlighten you for things like you might have missed out on before. It tries not, it tries to st stay in arc, is really what it is within the animation, um, 
tries not to defer too much from what they already did animated style and it just sort of cuts right in the middle of the first season and like you could just slip it in there and it wouldn't make a lick of difference and that's really what it did and they did a good job with that now let me tell you Based on what I've seen of the first season and the second season, the art was pretty up there. They didn't really defer anything like that. I guess the little, the animation was a little bit more smoother in the arc, but, but that, that's because we have more technology and there's been a lot of water play, if you guys know what I'm saying, you know, free <laughs> and all that stuff like that. So, yeah, um... The animation was pretty good. It stayed up to character. It didn't go down. It didn't. It didn't really go up. It just kind of stayed level at where it was. It kept the the animation of Kurosuji of what what it's known for, what it's good for, and that was pretty good. The flexibility in the characters, the smooth transitions, the wonderful classical music, and you know, slipped in there. Love it. Absolutely love. I loved the whole Victorian era to begin with. Loved how they did it. So it's it was pretty good. And the characters now, they um they definitely <laughs> let me just say this. Sebastian was sassier, definitely sassier than he was in any of the other seasons. Like, season one, Sebastian was a lot more loyal, more admirable. He acted more professional, like a butler would act. And that was, that was, that was Sebastian. That was his role. He was Shiel's butler. In season two, it goes in a little bit more. Um, Shiel is, you know, he's got his own style. He's, like, killing, you know, his own enemies. He's going to fight alloys by himself and things like that. And Sebastian's kind of dark, but he's keeping secrets from Shiel. But he still, he still restrains himself. Like, in season one, you sort of see him, like, being a little sassy. Well, you have to order me. And things like that. But other than that, he was pretty good. This arc, Noah's arc, Book of Circus, he was sassy. He made a lot of underhanded comments to Shiel about his, key point, non-spoiler, about his dancing. Like, we all know that Shiel's pretty bad dancer, or so it says, based off the manga, season one and season two. He's a pretty bad dancer, and he always needs help with dance lessons, and yeah, Sebastian just kept jabbing him with those kind of comments throughout most of the animation on this one, so it kind of gave you like a hold up, like you're supposed to be his butler, butlers don't, butlers don't do that, so needless to say, I did not like the sassiness of Sebastian, I think that's a little bit more, hey, be a little bit more professional, will you? And it, it wasn't really my style. But another key point of character, so she, Chiel was, uh, I, I didn't mind Chiel so much in the first one because it sort of showed, like, character development and growth on his part. He was, he, he really needed, he was always showing how, why, let me correct myself, in season one it was always going back to does he need to exact revenge and why, what is his purpose, what is he actually doing, why can't he ever let it go, and he always goes back, this is for me, this revenge is not for anybody else, it's not for my parents, it's for me, I'm Shiel Phantom Hive, I'm the new Earl, I'm gonna do this my way, whatever I say goes, and that was the whole like season one of Shiel, season two was a little bit more independent, like he, he was shooting people himself, he was like fighting Fighting alloys by himself. He was doing whatever. Sure, he ended up kidnapped like mo many of the other dimes in season one and in the manga. He gets kidnapped a lot. <laughs> but I like that independence he had. I thought it was really great. I think it like totally boosted up my perspective of Shial, even though he's 12, 13 in the manga, 12 year old kid. Um, he's just pumped up the jam for me. I appreciated that. I liked his independence. It showed me that he was growing, and that was important to me, personally. So, in this one, it sort of showed his useless side. Like, he didn't do anything, and I'm gonna get into that in, like, the spoiler of the first episode. I'm not gonna spoil anything else, really, but I'm gonna definitely spoil this first episode, because it's something that needs to be said. The first episode of this arc was exactly, like, and I'm not saying exactly point to point to point of the first season's first episode, no. But it was exactly like the first episode. It up, opens up with Shell gonna have a dinner party with a colleague of Laos, who's an acquaintance, sort of, slight enemy, slash business partner, slash tells him 
information helps him slightly. Anyway, Lau brings an acquaintance who wants to use the Phantom Hive companies, you know, think children things to attract more customers when beneath it all he's actually gonna use the route that he gets from Shiel as a gun gun transport route. Yeah. So smuggling route. Let me be politically correct. Needless to say, um so the whole the whole first part of the episode is Sebastian getting ready for this dinner party and it's all funny, hunky dory. You see how the servants Benny Mayrin and oops, sorry. Ah! There we go. I had to fix my leg. <laughs> Benny Mayrin and Bard are totally yeah, useless and they're always making trouble and that's that's generally the idea throughout everything that they're in. And it just goes into that and he's doing everything despite all of that and he's getting everything ready by himself pretty much and everything's cool and dandy but yeah so he doesn't still doesn't even want this dinner party but he's doing it because he can't like blow him off because he was introduced by Lau and that would be rude and whatever that nobility thing I would have just said I'm not doing it I'm I'm phantom hive he wants my business and no but needless to say during the dinner party this guy like, I got to set up, I got my men waiting, they're going to come and shoot this place up, and you're like, bring it on. Sebastian's been shot by guns plenty of times before, and it's basically the same thing. So, um, no, they didn't come. Sebastian already eliminated them before the dinner party had, during the preparation part, and things like that. And it was just, it's kind of repeat, like, dinner party, bad guy, bad guy gets smoked, end of the episode and it just it was just a way to bring in the the animation like we're back that was what it was saying we're back and we're just as good if not better than we were before there's one thing about the the introduction because it was not that was the one episode that wasn't part of the manga um it was the chandelier not chandelier it was the champagne tower where Sebastian's like pouring the champagne in and Mei Rin comes in and she's like ah and she drops things again she's like thrown her tray it almost looks like because she's always tripping and throwing things and it hits the tower and everything goes crashing down and you see the work of how they up the animation a little with the what with the champagne and how he's like slow like slow everything slow motion and Sebastian's doing and using his demonic powers I thought that was pretty well done for animation style. I think they they really upped the bar there. But other than that, everything was pretty much the same. Um, after that, you get introduced to new characters in the show. Joker, Doll, Beast, Dagger. You'll hear all these characters. Wendy, Peter, with you don't know where they're, they're from. You kind of... Uh, you kind of need your fairy tales because it's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty play on words. Peter and Wendy are the youngest two in the group, but they... Peter sounds like a man, and it doesn't suit his body type. Like, if you watch the Japanese version, I like using, 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 watching English subbed instead of dubbed, personally. So, if you, you saw that, that was a pretty weird play on words. And Doll, who is supposed to be the prettiest, well, that would be a spoiler, so I'm not going to tell you that. Um, but, it's, you, you get to see, like, Sebastian uses Leatris, Leatris, kinky, whatever, raunchy te tactics, techniques to get information again, just like in season one, they played on that, um, and the, the good part about it was that you got to see a little bit of how, what Shiel faced in his past. Um, how, what he faced after his parents were killed and he was kidnapped and he was sent to this humiliation, what kind of humiliation he, he endured and things like that. So it was, other than that, it was pretty good. So the plot line was just like the manga and I wasn't really surprised, um, since I already read the manga, it was like a waste of my time, honestly. I was like, I've already seen it. I guess the only reason I'm watching it is because, hey! Sorry. <laughs> I have a, I have a dog and, yeah, um... <laughs> So it was, a, it was uh, would I recommend it? Oh, yeah, I thought it was awesome. I thought the animation was great. The music was sublime, as always. I've always enjoyed the classical. I'm a little, <sighs> I'm a little like that. I play piano personally, so I'm always up for classical music myself. 
so I've I've always liked that. Um, and other than that, uh, it's really though a kill time thing. You don't really you don't really see a lot of cool, exciting things that happen. There's nothing like tear jerking, no, like emotion dragging, like in season one or like thrilling, you know. And as, like, season two, like, that train scene was awesome. Um, there's nothing really thrilling like that or anything in this arc. It was just, we're bringing to be back. Maybe we'll make some more arcs. Not entirely sure. I didn't read those author notes or anything like that because I'm just not, I'm not that much of an Duhaku, as I told you. I'm just, just a watcher of good anime. Some good anime. Like, I know you'll hate me later when I tell you the anime I don't watch. But, other than that, um, so, Black Butler, Book of Circus, because I can't seem to pronounce it in Japanese, <laughs> yeah, um, I thought it was really good, and I would recommend it, it's like, it's hill time for me, I finished it, it's only like 10 episodes long, and it's really, it won't hurt you, it's just, it's, it's something nice, and you kind of, you kind of get a little, of uh, uh, Sebastian Sassiness, which is kind of sweet at the same time as, like, eh? Um, but, <laughs> uh, let me, I told you I would tell you a little why I didn't, I didn't complete the manga yet, and I'm not even up to date because I stopped reading it, and why that ties into this, because Shiel is kind of useless in this arc, he doesn't really do much, he does, like, one little thing, one little thing, like, towards the end of the, like, whole ten episodes, he does one little thing, and I'm just not impressed, I'm really not, I'm just, I, mean, I liked the independent Shiel that they gave in season two. I like that kind of independence. I thought it, it's a more of a growth in him. Um, and that's kind of how he was in the manga going on. He was kind of useless, getting kidnapped a lot. Everybody everybody wanted him. And, yeah, and he was just always lying <sighs> on Sebastian. And I'm just like, oh. <sighs> You've been, like, 12 for what? A year or so now? Like, grow up a little. You're, you should be, like, 13, 14. Anyway, but that's. <laughs> so I do recommend this I hope you guys enjoy it and if you have because I'm pretty much wrapped this up if you have any questions comments things about the show in general that you're like curious about like go ahead leave them down below wherever wherever that is leave it down below um have any recommendations for anime or manga I am all ears and eyes for hearing it um I also watch Asian dramas and things like that so hit you then Hostess just finished watching that classical, um, not classical, but pretty old dish movie. It's fantastic, I personally thought. So, um, you should check that out if you like that, you know, Japanese movies. I cried multiple times in that, for reals. Like, for reals. So, I'll also be showing you guys throughout this, like, video, whatever I'm doing, I'm not even sure because I might not even keep up because I get really lazy like that and I get caught up in things. Currently, I'm just trying to find something to watch. <laughs> and life, life, life is hard. Okay, yeah. <sighs> like, life is really hard. Um, but, <laughs> um, I'll try to, I'll show you some of my artwork because I do draw, I do do personally some anim not animations, you know, manga style art. So I might, you know, upload those as well. If you guys want any videos on how to draw something or things like that, I might just do that as well because my brother's always asking me, how do you draw this? How do you draw this? Oh, you can draw so nicely. I'll give you some tips and pointers on how to do it um, Asian style because I do do that. And if you're wondering, oh, hey, are you actually Asian? Is that, are you just like, like obsessively compulsive and you really obsessed with the Asian culture. I am half Filipino, so uh, that doesn't count for anything. It's not Japanese. It's yeah, it's not Japanese at all. But I do love the culture, and even if I can't pronounce some of the words, I absolutely do adore it. So hope you stay tuned. Hope you enjoy your rest of your whatever this is whenever I upload it. <laughs> hope you enjoy and sayonara, minasa. See, I do know some Japanese. You might see that later. Uh, demo, maybe not. <laughs> Bye.